How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you guys how you can use the Tor browser safely. Um, this is just going to be kind of a beginner's guide. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the Tor browser is a free open source web browser that allows users to browse the internet anonymously. It works by routing your internet traffic through a network of servers known as the Tor network which masks your IP address and makes it difficult for anyone to track your online activity. Now, some tips to keep in mind when using the Tor browser. The first one is pretty self-explanatory. Just keep the Tor browser up to date. And this is pretty important in order to get the latest security fixes and features. The second tip is you want to go to the settings and go to privacy and security. First thing you want to do is um, make sure that the always use private browsing mode is on. Also, you want to disable the JavaScript and some websites may require JavaScript to function properly, but enabling it can also potentially expose you to security vulnerabilities. And so to disable JavaScript, simply go from uh, standard mode to safest mode. And this will make sure that the JavaScript is disabled by default on all sites. By the way, safer mode will also uh, disable JavaScript. Uh, so yeah, in case you don't want to go with the safest. Also, make sure that the block dangerous and deceptive content is ticked so that you can avoid all of that. So that would be pretty much it for the second tip. Third thing you want to keep in mind is avoid using personal information when using the Tor browser. It's a good idea to avoid using your personal information, such as your name, email address, or phone number, because generally speaking, this will help you protect your anonymity. Also, be careful when downloading files when using the Tor browser, as they could potentially compromise your anonymity. Only download files from trusted sources and scan them with an antivirus software before opening them. Also, um, do not use your own IP address when downloading any of these, because when you download a specific file, uh, your IP address will be exposed to, well, whoever is on the other side or on the administrative side of things with regards to that uh, file. You could be using a peer-to-peer -peer connection for all you know when downloading such files. So make sure they're using a VPN or a virtual private network in conjunction with the Tor browser, because a VPN can help further encrypt your internet that connection and protect your online activity from being monitored. Um, and if you didn't know, while the Tor browser does hide your activity and your ISP won't be able to tell what you're doing on the Tor browser, your ISP can still tell that your real IP address is connected to the Tor browser and the Tor browser is associated typically with illicit activities. So if you want to avoid any suspicions or the prying eyes of your government or uh, ISP, make sure that you're using a VPN to encrypt your entire device instead of just using the Tor browser to encrypt whatever whatever it is that you're doing on the Tor browser. So it's a great idea. And also, if you're looking for a good VPN, I have three good options right here. Uh, I've tested over a couple of dozen VPNs and narrowed it down to these three as the best overall. Um, they all vary in budgets and features, so pick and choose depending on your own situation, um, your own specific needs, preferences, and budget. Uh, you've got Express, Nord, and Surfshark. They all work really well with regards to privacy. They have a strict no locks policy and military-grade AES 256-bit encryption. And NordVPN will especially be a great option since you have all these extra security features such as double VPN, which will encrypt your traffic twice instead of just one, routing your connection through two servers instead of just one. Onion over VPN servers will work uh, very well with the Tor browser since it will give you extra anonymity and it will make sure that you're on servers that are very secure for maximum anonymity. We have Dark Web Monitor, uh, which will also search for leaked data linked to your email address, um, passwords, contacts, or any other personal details uh, while you're using the dark web. In case anything gets leaked on the dark web, it will just uh, alert you right away. This is a pretty useful feature. And Threat Protection will block ads, malware, um, websites that have malware in them, and it will also fend off malicious files before they damage your device, acting as a bit of a mini antivirus. So NordVPN is a great option, as well as Surfshark and ExpressVPN. It's just that NordVPN gives you a bunch of extra options, uh, which is pretty useful. Also, the final thing for today is, uh, well, two-factor authentication. If you're using any online accounts that contain sensitive information, it's a good idea to enable two-factor authentication. This adds an extra layer of security to your account and makes it more difficult for attackers to gain access. 
Also, in terms of passwords while using the Tor browser, I do recommend that you use very strong and secure passwords. And um, if you're looking for a password manager that generates powerful um, passwords, you can actually get that with the plus package with NordVPN. You have the cross-platform password manager if you want to generate and store such passwords. So that's pretty much it for this video. Though if you guys are interested in any of these VPNs, you'll find links to pricing discounts in the description down below, as well as full reviews if you'd like to learn more about the privacy policy, speed streaming and torrenting capabilities, as well as security and features. And of course, they're all covered by a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you can test drive these VPNs for 30 days risk-free. Otherwise, you can simply get yourself a refund. Besides that, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one have a wonderful day.